In this question, we have to determine which of these equations would represent a line perpendicular to this line. Well, as soon as you see the word perpendicular, we should be thinking about the slope. So let's go ahead and figure out the slope of this line. And to do that, we need a couple of points on the line. It doesn't matter which points we pick. So let's say this one here. And we could pick this point right here. And to get from this point to the other point, I'd have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in other words, the rise in this case would be negative 4, and the run would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So slope is rise over run, and that would be negative 4 then, divided by 8. And simplifying, 4 goes in there twice, goes in there once. So our slope is negative 1 half. And we can just kind of in our mind verify that we've got the right answer for the slope of this line because it's a slope going down to the right, which means it's a negative slope. And it's rather shallow, so it's not a steep slope. Um, so that makes sense that it would be about, about negative a half. Now what we want is the slope of a line perpendicular to this one. So how are the slopes of perpendicular lines related? Well, we know that they are negative reciprocals of one another. In other words, the rise becomes the run, and the run becomes the rise, and we change the sign. So the perpendicular line would have, have a rise of 2, a run of 1, and be positive. Which means the slope would be 2. Let's verify that. Let's try to draw in this perpendicular line. Let's say I pick this point here, and we know the rise would be 2, and then over 1, which means it would go here. Rise of 2 over 1 all the way, and let's draw that line as best we can. And it looks like, yeah, indeed, it's, it's perpendicular. In other words, it's at 90 degrees to the other line. And in this case, with a slope of 2, we can see that it's going up to the right, so it is a positive slope. And it's much steeper than the other line, so it makes sense that it would have a slope of about 2. Now that we've figured out the slope, let's take a look at our options to see which of these equations has a slope of 2. Well, we can remember perhaps that y equals mx plus b form of the equation of a straight line. The m represents the slope. So if we look at the uh, numbers associated with the x, we can see the first one has a slope of negative 2. The second one has a slope of 2, which is our slope. The third one has a slope of negative 1 half, which is not our slope. And the fourth one has a slope of a half, which is not ours. Therefore, it looks like option B is the right answer. Now, one of the things to point out is it really doesn't matter what the y-intercept is in this case, because you can have an infinite number of perpendicular lines drawn to this line that they give us, like here and here and here, etc. Each of these lines would have a different y-intercept, but they would all have the same slope. So just to finish off and extend the problem a bit, why don't we figure out this equation that they give us, this one right here, and draw it on our grid and see if it is makes sense in terms of being perpendicular, etc. So given y equals mx plus b, the b represents the y-intercept. So we know that the y-intercept of this equation is 4, and we can plot that point right there. And we know it has a slope of 2, which means it has a rise of 2 and a run of 1. So from this point right here, we go up 2 over 1. We can plot that point right there. The other, other way to do it is we could go actually down 2 and to the left 1, which is the same thing as going up 2 and over 1. So we could plot the point there and there, etc., and then draw a line through all these points as best we can. And when we look at this line, we see that it does indeed look like it's perpendicular. It goes up to the right, and it has a slope of 2. So it looks like we've got the right answer.